Ableton Push 3 is here. This is just the controller version that I'm doing this video about. And this is, I would say, a very basic overview about the Push 3. My thoughts and uh, my background on Ableton and Push and why I decided to go for the Push 3. So this is dedicated to the controller version only. Um, I have no, or didn't really have any interest on the standalone version after, I think my initial feeling on it was no, no. Um, not after looking at the specs and thinking, wow, this is a very expensive um, product. And then looking at the battery life, it's using an Intel platform. I wasn't too really impressed so that wasn't for me so this video is on the controller version only okay so let's start with the box yeah it came in this box and my god this thing is heavy this thing is really heavy but this box alone which has got a box within a box weighs just over two and a half kilos believe it or not just for this i believe i've just got the usb cable in here but yeah, it comes with um, very well packaged, actually. Comes with a power supply, obviously, in one box. It comes with a USB cable and another box and a USB-C cable, which I think I already said that already, didn't I? What was in the other box? The power cord, that's it. So the power supply is in one box. The power cord for your country is in another box. And the USB-C cable is in its own little box as well extremely well packaged i mean i think this can be probably dropped on the floor and the push would just like laugh at you and think is that all you got because it's so well protected and that's that box and then that's like i said it comes in another one so the unit itself my gosh it is heavy man that's kind of the first thing you you kind of experience when you pick it up out of the box it's like wow this is a solid unit but build quality 10 out of 10 no fingerprint magnet like some of these other devices are whether it's a musical equipment or mobile phone or whatever very well made solid construction yeah so that's number one initially again whether it's the controller version or standalone, I was not impressed with the fact that they didn't update this screen. I really hope they would like make this OLED, but I can imagine the cost of making this quite large comparatively a uh, screen as, OE, as OLED, trying to find um, a company that can manufacture, manufacture OLED screens this size to this scale, that Ableton, I'm sure, are hoping to sell at would be very expensive. But on, on from a consumer point of view, from my point of view, I'm more than happy to, to pay an extra 100, an extra 200, maybe max more for this unit if it had OLED. I just think the viewing angles would be superb. And what you've noticed is that a lot of the videos um, showing this unit are filming it from directly overhead hold on let me turn off this light for one second and when you do that boom the colors really pop yeah but the way i've got this i'm sitting i've, I've had to tilt my whole top shelf unit to try and view this um push while i'm sitting down but anyway that's that's just my personal view pop the light back on so yeah initial impressions of the actual unit itself build quality absolutely fantastic like i said i was hoping the screen would be improved because you can see you know some pixelation when you go a bit closer but you know what it doesn't detract from the musing making process when you get into your little groove yeah so yeah i'm gonna allow them that Buttons, again, initial feeling was you really need to push these things in really hard, yeah, for them to function, but you soon get used to that. Love the buttons, love the adaptive, so to speak, 
uh, displays and that certain buttons will light up when your you know that action is available for you to to use so like i said from a controller perspective i wanted this one i didn't want the standalone didn't think it was worth it and this suits me perfectly so through usb obviously going through my macbook pro i've got my midi controller i've got my audio interface that's going to be retired soon uh, yeah this is probably going to go on the wall the push is actually retired this machine jam i'm going to put that on my wall as a display unit very very shortly i've got um, my touche expressive touche um, also going through usb and also through the usb hub i've got my micro freak and through usb i've got my modular synth as well I'm hoping, in fact, I have the adapters already, so I can use CV to go into my uh, link to and split the the signals to my some of my modules so I can control my modular um, synth through CV. By the moment, it's going through USB, yeah? And I've also got through USB, through the USB hub, my Nectar Pacer, um, for controller and my Nord Drum 3. Wirelessly, I've got this WiddyBud Pro, which is going and speaking to my Behringer Crave. Yeah, a little bit of history about me and Push. I used to have a Push 2. It was the first Push controller that I purchased, and it was, I, I absolutely loved it. It was love at first sight, love at first feel. And it did take me a while to get used to the workflow because I was used to just using the software, the mouse and, you know, pointing and clicking and mouse buttons, keyboards, MIDI controllers and stuff like that. So the push to was, I, I kind of had to work to understand the workflow. But when you kind of understand it, it's very, it was very good. But unfortunately, very soon after, I had to sell it because of my situation. So I didn't have it for too long. I didn't really get into it. But ever since the day I sold it, I, I just regretted it, yeah? And so for me, it was a case of, yeah, one day I'll get a push to, and then the years rolled on, the years rolled on. Then it got to the stage where, you know what? Should I get a push to? I think it's about due for a push three. And this is going back two years. So this is 2021. And I was like, yeah, I'm sure they're going to announce one soon. I'm sure they're going to. And I was just waiting and waiting. I was looking through the rumor mills and looking for any indication and I didn't see anything. So I ended up getting a MPC actually. I ended up getting an MPC one um, and found this thing to be absolutely fantastic. It's a brilliant little box. And it's good for getting some ideas down quickly. And I was very happy with it. Yeah. Roll on another two years. And what happened? You got the announcement of the Push 3 standalone and controller version. So I thought, you know what? Because I started using Ableton every day, it would be best if I actually got a controller, which I originally wanted. And so I decided to pull the trigger and go for it. Apart from the reservations I had on the screen and actually these LED buttons, I wish they were a little bit more fully covered in terms of the lighting, got the lighting down quite a lot, but you really get the, what you see on the videos is true that there's a really bright dot in the middle and then it kind of fades out. See, I've got my LED brightness, 28% and yeah, I'm not a big fan of that. I wish they would, you know, smoothly cover the pads in terms of the lighting, but there you go. After I got over those um, initial thoughts, after if it's been about a week now, I can say this thing is absolutely fantastic. And I want to say that from the point of view of somebody who's on the edge of whether they should get it or not and don't have a push, but maybe had experience of a push previously, whether it's a push one or push two, and they're users of Ableton and deciding whether they should go for it. I'm saying, I think you should go for it. 
just for the controller version, definitely. I think it is so intuitive. It's ridiculously easy to use, yeah? And I can see that getting better and better over time as I get more familiar with this, with this unit. One other thing I want to say is I really realized how much I was getting into this when I had Ableton Live up on my Mac. And normally if I'm using Ableton, when I was using the machine controller, obviously my main point of focus was the computer, yeah? And so this screen never ever went off. There was no screensaver, there was no sleep, nothing. It was always on because I was interacting with this, yeah? And since I got the Push 3, one th I had an aha moment the other day when I was playing with it and I wanted to do something and because I wasn't really familiar with the Push, I thought, let me go to my computer. So I went to it and it's like, oh, the screen is blank. Not screensaver, it, the computer actually went to sleep. But obviously I'm still using Live. <laughs> And I was like, wow, that goes to show, I don't even need to look at this screen anymore. So that was a brilliant moment. And that's happened continuously in every session, every session since. When I'm on this, I don't really need to look at that to the point that every time this will go to sleep or the screensaver will come on and I don't even know that's there. Yeah, I'm going to change the layout of my studio over time. So I'm going to have a, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to change it. So I, I definitely won't be using that in the future as I get more familiar. So things are going to change up. Yeah, I don't believe I'm going to be using the audio interface of this controller, but I'm really glad they do include an audio interface on the um, controller version of Push 3. So that's, that's really good. ADAT, I'm not sure if I'm going to use it. The audio interface I'm going to get will have eight ADAT inputs and eight outputs. Not sure if I will use that connectivity, but you never know. Yeah, the pads, really nice. One thing about Push 2, they had, and to this day, had the best pads for me on the planet. They were very responsive, fantastic, and the Push 3 pads, are exactly the same, or obviously better with MP. They're very, very responsive, and I'm very happy with that. Well, another thing I should have said is that I'm just using live intro because I've actually got Ableton 10 suite, but uh, at the time I couldn't afford to get this and also upgrade to the 11 suite as well. So I'll do that another time. But um, it's good enough to get you through getting familiar with this unit and so on. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. I just want to say I'm going to do more videos on this as I get more familiar. But I just want to say for those on the fence uh, about whether they should get the controller version of the new push, go for it. Stop smoking. Stop drinking. Make sure your kidneys are really clean so you can sell one of them, yeah, because <laughs> definitely worth it. It's super intuitive. Once you get yourself familiar the first couple of days back into the familiarity of using this device, like in my case, you start to realize it's fantastic. It's a fantastic, it's a fantastic device. Recommend it. Go and get it. Okay, see you in the next one.